this is the commitment, and this is why you'll see, even as we go through the talk and we read some of these quotations from medical texts taken by evolutionists, you'll see this prior commitment coming out throughout the talk. And so Richard Dawkins, a famous British evolutionist, he says this in The Blind Watchmaker, biology is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. And I would say the appearance is there because they were designed for a purpose. And when you see design and you conclude design, you're the one who's thinking rationally. You're the one who's thinking logically. You're the one who's thinking consistently and consistently scientifically. It's the people who see that design and attribute it to an appearance that are the ones who are not thinking scientifically. Okay, back to... Reproduction. I thought I'd give you a little breather on that scientific jargon now that you've caught your breath. We're going to talk about here spermatogenesis. Now that's just the fancy word for the formation of sperm. And I'm saying it's a unique and complex thing that points clearly to design. Now some of you are thinking, well, what? Now? What? Sperm? Don't they just come along? You know, boys... They, they grow up and they're, they're talking with a high-pitched voice and then somewhere around 13, 14, they start to crackle a bit and then the voice drops and lo and behold, sperm are out on the scene. And, and they just, they're just there, aren't they? Well, no, they're not just there. They go through a complex process which I guarantee nobody, nobody has ever bothered to take the time to tell you before. That is, let's look at this right here. Here's a sperm. I'm going to turn my back to you. I'm not being rude, but I want to point to the screen right here. This is a blown up drawing of a sperm. Now, that's a very distinctive cell in the body. We've all seen them because they have this long tail, and they can actually swim. They can swim around, and they swim by whipping this tail back and forth. And this shows that there are several parts to the sperm. There's the head of the sperm, and inside this blue area on the screen is DNA. That's where all the chromosomes are all of the chromosomes that the male is going to contribute. And how many chromosomes is the male going to contribute? He's going to give 23. 21? 23. You might have 21, but most of us have 23 <laughs> on there. We have uh, we had 23. And the mother is going to contribute how many? 23. You see, it's equal. Equal right there. No, no discrimination. 23 from mom, 23 from dad, making a full complement of 46 in a normal human being. So there's 23 chromosomes wrapped up. Now this is all, this is free at no additional charge. They're wrapped up on tiny, tiny little spools, tiny little proteins in there called histones. And why are they wrapped up on spools? Because you could take a human DNA molecule and you could actually stretch it almost the way ar completely around the earth. It's so thin and it is so long and if you want to clumple it up into a, such a tiny area, you had better do it in a very organized fashion. Just like you're going to wind up a, a videotape on a spool. And they're wound up on tiny, tiny little spools and they're compact in there so when it comes time, they can unfold and open up and they won't be in a big jumbled mess. The tip of the sperm is a, a, an organism called an acrosome, an organ called an acrosome. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but it's very, very important. Then you see the midpiece right here. This is full of mitochondria, which is the energy factory. And then there are some microtubules down the tail of the sperm, which allow it to propel itself. And the other picture right there shows the sperm, the size of a sperm, compared to the size of an egg that's just been ovulated. So you can see the sperm is very, very small compared to the size of an egg. Now you notice that egg isn't smooth, just like a chicken's egg. An egg that a woman ovulates, and it happens about the 14th day of the cycle every month on a normal woman, it has a bunch of cells all around it. And those are called the corona radiata. And here's the cytoplasm, and here's the nucleus, and there's a little ball of DNA that mom is going to contribute as well. And so the tiny, tiny sperm compared to that huge egg. An egg actually is one of the few cells, if you could find it, that is almost visible to the naked eye. If you, if you could see one right after it's ovulated, it's that big. But sperm you can't see, they're microscopic. And this is another little drawing taken from another textbook. And I point it, bring this up here because this shows a cross section through the tail of the sperm. And most people don't know this, but if you look inside that tail of the sperm, you'll see, you'll see structure, you'll see design even in the tail. You'll see a bunch of microtubules that are making up this tail right here. All of these pairs of microtubules are making up the sperm, uh, the tail of it. 
And those microtubules are going to have little connections between each of them, and they're going to ratchet back and forth, and it's going to be under the control of a biochemical process, which is going to absorb calcium and other things in there. And as these little connections between those microtubules ratchet back and forth, they're going to, talk, they're going to be able to allow that tail of the sperm to wiggle back and forth, and it's going to be able to swim. So it's a propelling system where you're going to move two long tubules side to side, and it's going to cause that tail to move back and forth and swim. And so this is, this is actually in a flagella. It's a similar system as those others. But I want you to see the design even in the tail right here of the sperm. Well, what about this new thing that you've never heard before called the blood testes barrier, which protects the sperm from auto-destruction and immediate species infertility? I suppose none of you have ever heard of that before, this blood testes barrier. But it's an important structure inside a testicle. And I'll show you a picture of it right here. But first of all, we have to find out what is the function of a blood testes barrier. Now let's look at this slide here. I'll review, I'll reread some of it and then I'll explain it to you. It says the occluding junctions between the Sertoli cells are responsible for the barrier. So you have cells inside a testicle called Sertoli cells, and they're going to be joined together, and they're going to make a junction. And that's going to make this blood testes barrier, which is important in protecting male germ cells, otherwise known as sperm, against blood-borne noxious agents. Differentiation of spermatogonial cells leads to the appearance of sperm-specific proteins. Since sexual maturity occurs long after the development of immunocompetence, Differentiating sperm cells could be recognized as foreign and provoke an immune response that would destroy the germ cells. The blood testes barrier prevents the passage of these immunoglobulins. Whoa, what in the world is that? Well, let me explain to you what that's talking about. Let me get a sip here real quick. Okay, a little immunology. You all have an immune system. And your immune system is what protects you against foreign invaders of bacteria.